President Biden set to mark his first 100 days in office next week, three plus months marked by a full blown border crisis and progressive policy priorities that have some political analysts referring to him as our first woke president. Let's get some expert analysis of the Biden doctrine so far from Hoover Institution senior fellow Victor Davis Hanson. Great to have you back tonight. Thank you. Let's start with this. The Chicago well, Sun Times lot. has this headline. It says Joe Biden's bait and switch presidency. It says as a candidate, Joe Biden promised voters a center left agenda and bipartisanship. As a president, he's giving them neither. Biden's deception is based on the oldest marketing technique in the book, bait and switch. Victor. Yeah, I think there's something to that. I think a lot of people said if it's not broken, uh, don't try to fix it. And he inherited a great vaccination program. And wisely, he sort of said, this is the Biden vaccination program that we were vaccinating one million a day in a way that the EU or Russia or China was not. And the same thing was true of the uh, economy, that the fundamentals were there with tax reform and energy uh, increased production and deregulation. He's already tampered with that. And we've got record inflation now. Uh, in March and, and housing and gas is go and food are going through the roof when you pour so much printed money at so few goods. So he, he didn't really have to tamper with that, but he did. I think he's going to leave the China policy and take credit because that was a wise thing that Trump did that's sort of exposed the idea that you appease China and they're going to reform. That's not going to happen. But what I think is a, the big legacy so far and the worry is that all of these other initiatives of the hard left, the woke initiatives, uh, the voter ID initiatives, the open border initiative, the identity politics, the reparations, the Green New Deal, they don't poll 51%, Shannon. And he doesn't have a mandate for them. He has a 50-50 Senate, a very small uh, margin in the House, an unsympathetic Supreme Court. So you would think he'd bring everybody together and say, look, let's compromise and get some of this and some of that, but he's not. So how does he get the agenda through? He can't do it by policy, so he's doing it by process. So he's saying, we're going to get rid of a 233-year-old electoral college. We're going to get a 233-year-old states with the primacy of national uh, election laws. We're going to get rid of that with the national uh, election law. We're going to get rid of 62 years of a 50-state union and bring in two states. We're going to get rid of a 150-year tradition of a nine-person Supreme Court. And so he's trying, trying to change the way that we do things because the way that we do things will not give him the intended result because the only alternative mm -hmm. is to compromise and be a uniter. And he can't do that for a variety well, of reasons. He's mortgaged his well, soul to the when, hard left. Yeah, I mean, but that's what he told us and even talked about this on Inauguration Day. He talked about working with both sides and finding compromise. He's talked about bipartisanship. It's something the left told him they didn't like about him during the campaign, but he, he sold himself as a moderate who would find bipartisan solutions. Uh, the Washington Post says this. Um, he is now seeking to redefine bipartisanship. To hear President Biden and his team tell it, a successful bipartisan bill need not attract a single Republican vote. Biden pushed his $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill through the Senate with the support of all 50 Democrats and nary a Republican, yet later declared it a resounding bipartisan triumph. I mean, it seems like we have a lot of language going on with, uh, or games going on with language and semantics. Uh, the president doesn't seem to be immune from that. Uh, no Republican votes and yet a bipartisan victory? Yeah, I, I think that Joe Biden is not a vigorous 78, and there's a lot of people who he has outsourced this responsibility that have this agenda. But let's be clear. We're talking about a Joe Biden that never existed. Joe Biden throughout his career was not a uniter. He was a person that destroyed Robert Bork and Clarence Thomas in their confirmation hearings. This was a guy, when it was popular, was a strong supporter of Southern racists like James O. Eastland. And he was a good friend of Robert Byrd. And he said a lot of divisive things. I mean, if you take any politician in the last 20 years and you collate what they said on race, whether it's you ain't black or you're junkie or Barack Obama is the first uh, clean, articulate black man or this donut shop is full of Indians. He said a lot of polarizing things. So this idea of good old Joe from Scranton was a media construct that was resurrected in the campaign because Michael Bloomberg, the compromised uniter, supposedly flamed out and they were stuck with a, a bunch of hard left candidates. So they said, well, there's old Joe that didn't really do well, but we're going to resurrect him and say he's a uniter. 
But Joe was never a uniter. He was always a divisive character, and he'd run twice before and hadn't been successful because he was neither honest about his campaign, he had to draw, uh, drop out, or he was polarizing. And uh, so this myth that he's a uniter, nobody, I don't think any of us believed it. It was a media creation, and so when he revealed what he's really a about, it's a return to who he is. He always was that way. Well, this conversation about whether something is bipartisan without getting a single Republican vote is uh, further illustrative of where may, we may be going. Plenty of executive action, and that is president's purview to use it. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson, always great to have you visit with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.